Welcome to another episode of Happy Watch Video Tutorials. In this episode, we're going to talk about watch kit animation. First, let's check out the latest blog post. Everything we'll be covering today in this video tutorial is available on happy.watch and it's the watch kit animation frame rate tutorial. The Apple Watch will be available this spring 2015 and an important consideration for building apps will be performance. The SDK for building apps is called WatchKit and it was unveiled in late November 2014. One of the most surprising things about WatchKit is that there is no core animation. To achieve the animation effect, you instead use a sequence of images, flipbook style. So on Twitter, a question was posed. David Wang asked, has anyone seen documentation on what the frame rate for WatchKit animations are? I couldn't find documentation, but the answer I was able to determine is 30 frames per second. Let's see how we figured this out. There's a few things we know. UI image animated image named duration can take up to 1024 images. It takes files named in a sequence, so number 1.png, then number 2.png, etc. Then if we look at the WatchKit um, SDK, we say that there's a method called start animating with images in range duration repeat count. So this means you can actually set a duration to make your images flip faster or slower. In fact, by changing that duration value, I was able to get 120 frames per second and 12 frames per second, depending on what I set. But in the Twitter question, David was really curious about what the default frame rate would be. So in order to test this, I made some numbered images in Photoshop. Then I imported them into Xcode and had WatchKit animate them. I used a stopwatch on my iPhone to test how long the full loop took and then I calculated the frames per second. The first step is to create 1,024 images, each with its own number smack dab in the center. To do this, we can use Photoshop's variables and datasets feature. So let's go ahead and fire up Photoshop. To do that, I press Command, Space, start typing Photoshop, press Enter when I find it, press File, New. We'll set the height and width to both 312, the reason we do that is that the width for the large Apple Watch, 42 millimeters, is actually 312 pixels. And we'll give it a name, we'll call this uh, number, and we'll press OK. So now that we've got that, let's press D on the keyboard, which gives me my default foreground and background colors, black and white. And then I can press Alt Delete. So that was Alt Delete, and that actually fills it with the foreground color. So now I've got a nice black background. And then I can press T for the Type tool on the keyboard. And you'll see that selects it in the toolbar there. And we're going to set um, our font to Avenir Next Condensed Heavy. Right there. And we'll set the font size to 145. And we'll make sure that our alignment is set to be center. So then I'll click anywhere. Oh, one more thing. We need to set the color to white. So now I click anywhere on the canvas and I just type 1024. And we'll see that that fills it up nicely. So we can now drag this text around, and we want it to be exactly in the center, but it's not giving us the guide. So in order to get those, we click on the Move tool, or you can press V on your keyboard. And you can drag this around. You, now you see you have the guide, so we want it right in the center. Now let's go Image, Variables, Define. Now we see that we have the right layer selected, our text 1024, and we're going to check the text replacement um, box, and then we'll type the name number and click OK. So the next thing we do need to do is make a data set for Photoshop to pull from. To do that, we're actually going to use the numbers Mac app um, that you get with the iWork set. So let's uh, press Command Space again and start typing numbers. Let's make a new document. So we'll go File, New. 
and we'll start with a blank. So click choose. Okay, now we've got numbers open. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we don't have this header column here. So to do that, we're going to change this headers to zero. Now we'll drag the handle in the lower right hand corner to change the number of rows and columns that we've got. So we're going to drag it all the way over so we only have one column. And then we need to drag it quite a bit more because we want to have 1,025 rows here. So right now we've only got 19. So let's drag it, and then I can use two fingers and scroll at the same time while I'm dragging. And that lets me just keep going until I get all the way up to 1,025. All right, got 1,025. Perfect. Now I'm going to scroll back all the way up to the top. And in the header row, I'm going to type a number. And then in the second row, type 1, press Enter, and then type 2 press enter. So now we've started our data set and numbers actually has a handy feature where I can um, fill in all the rest of them just based on these first two elements. So to do that I'm gonna hit command and select the second one. So now I have both cells selected and then there's a little yellow handle in the center there and I can start dragging that and you'll see that as I drag it it starts to fill in the other numbers. So do the same thing we did earlier and keep holding onto this while using your two other fingers to scroll and now we can scroll all the way down to fill out the full 1024. Sometimes you might get interrupted because the Mac thinks you're doing a different gesture so just come back to it and start again. All right now you see we've got all the way down to 1024. The next step is to export this to CSV so go file export to CSV. Go ahead and click next. We'll name our file numbers and click export. Now let's switch back to Photoshop and we'll go image, variables, datasets. We're going to click on import and then we'll find our numbers file that we just created. So I put mine in downloads, numbers, and everything is good. So we'll just click OK and we'll see that. In here it pulled in the first value and that's one and we can actually check this preview box and see what happens to our um, to our PSD file so if I check that we see that it actually does replace the text correctly and gives us one we uncheck it now we have our 1024 that we typed in earlier so let's go ahead and click OK now we need to export these and we'll end up with a bunch of PSD files to do that let's go file export datasets as files We'll select our folder and we'll actually make a new folder. We can call it watch animation image. And click choose. And now we need to make sure that our documents are named correctly. You can see in the preview here it says number dataset onepsd That's not what we want. We want them in order with just the name of the file and the number um, afterwards. So to do that, we'll leave document name, but in the next one, we want the dataset number, one, two, etc. And then in the third one, we don't need anything, so we'll set that to none. So now we see that our file naming is correct. We have number and then the order right after it. We'll leave our file extension as PSD and go ahead and click OK. Photoshop now is going to run through all of our images and it's going to generate each one from 1 all the way up to 1024 and put them in our folder. And I'll be back right after it finishes. Alright, so now that it's finished generating all the images, we can actually check out what it did in Finder. If we look in our folder, then we'll see that now we have a bunch of PSD files. That's awesome. But the next step we need to do is convert all of these into PNG files because that's what Xcode is going to want for the iOS app. To do that, we'll create an action. So in Photoshop, just click on the Actions panel and then click on the New button. We'll name ours Save PNG Close. 
click record. Now go file, save for web. We'll change the preset to PNG 24 and go ahead and click save. Now we probably need to go ahead and make a new folder. So I'm in downloads right now. I'm going to press new folder and I'll call this watch animation PNG. I'll click create. So now I'm in my watch animation PNG folder and I'm going to leave the default name. This is important. So don't change the name of the file. Click save. Now we need to close the document so that when Photoshop runs through, it closes it every time after it saves. So we'll just go ahead and make sure we're on this document and we'll press Command W or you can go File, Close. It's going to ask you if you want to save. Click Don't Save. Now we can stop the recording and we've got our action good to go. Now we'll go File, Automate, Batch, and we see that our last action is already in there, so save, PNG, close, and we're going to set our source folder to be the watch animation image, and then it already knows our destination, so we don't need to set anything here, so leave the destination as none and we'll go ahead and click OK. You'll see that Photoshop is going to run through all of your images that you have and save each one of them. So I'll be back when it's done that. All right, so now that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at it in Finder. We can go to our Watch Animation PNG folder, and we see that we've got all the files that we created, including that very first one. So we can go ahead and delete that first one because we don't need it. Now it's time for Xcode. I'm going to press command space and start typing Xcode. To use WatchKit right now, we need to use the Xcode beta, so I'll go ahead and click on that. In Xcode, we're going to create a new project, so you can click this button or I can go File, New, Project. Single view application is fine, we don't need anything fancy. And we're going to name our file WatchKit Animation Test. Make sure it's swift and universal. And you can go ahead and save it. Right now, we only have one target that can deploy to the iPhone 6. So if we run it, we get an iPhone 6 simulator with just a blank screen. But we're making a WatchKit app, so we actually need to have the Apple Watch simulator there as well. To do that, we go File, New, Target, and we see that it's already selected, but an iOS, Apple Watch, and WatchKit app. Click Next. Everything's good here for us, except we don't really need a notification scene, so I'm just going to uncheck that, and then press Finish. A pop-up will come up asking you if you want to activate the new scheme, and this means that we're going to be able to use that scheme for the simulator. So yes, I do want to do that. I'll click Activate. And now we see in here we have our original app and we have our new WatchKit app. Perfect. In the Project Navigator, I'm going to browse into my WatchKit app. We'll click on Images.xc Assets. Right now I don't have anything in there, but we're going to add all of our images in there. So in Finder, I have all of my numbers as PNG files, and to select them all, I'm going to hit Command A on my keyboard, and then I'm going to take all of those and drag them into the sidebar. Once they're in there, I can go back into Xcode and I'll click on my storyboard. The storyboard is a layout for our app, and our app is really simple. All we need is a single image. So in the object library, I'm going to search for image and then drag that over onto the screen. Once it's there, now we can open up the Assistant Editor and control drag from our image right below the class definition. We'll name the outlet number image 
and press connect. Now we need to actually set up the image. So we'll start with number image, our variable name, and we'll say dot set image named and as a string we'll say number. And then we'll do number image dot start animating. So now if I build and run the app, we'll see that we have the iPhone 6 simulator and the Apple Watch simulator, and that our animation is happening by flipping through all the images that we gave it. If we time this, it takes 34 seconds to go from 1 all the way up to 1024, and if we do 1024 divided by 34 seconds, then we get the frame rate of 30 frames per second. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial by Happy Watch, and look forward to seeing what you can do with animation in WatchKit.